Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to show you how to perform a band adjustment on a Ford C6 transmission. So we're going back together with this unit. Uh, this is the same transmission that was uh, featured in my uh, teardown inspection video, the full length version, not the short version. Uh, so a couple things. One, uh, the procedure is very straightforward and it's the same for any and all C6 variants. So you tighten the adjustment screw down to 120 inch pounds or 10 foot pounds and you back it off one and a half turns and then from there you assess, uh, you know, take a you know, physical inspection of band clearance and then you turn the uh, output shaft in the opposite direction engine rotation while you observe the direct drum rotating or spinning underneath the band. All right, so it's a good idea to kind of get a baseline feel for what a zero, um, you know, or neutral band would feel like. So the best way to do that is just to spin everything, the whole guts, just rotate everything counterclockwise. All right, that'll give you a, a good sense of what just absolutely no band, um, you know, as if the band wasn't even in the case, what that would feel like. And then you can kind of compare and contrast that once you have your uh, one and a half turns and the adjustment screw is more or less set. All right, so the tools you'll need for this job are as follows. You're gonna need a torque wrench capable of at least 40 foot-pounds of torque and one capable of producing 10 foot-pounds of torque. So unfortunately, I don't have one wrench that does both, so I got two different torque wrenches. Um, you're also gonna want a uh, just regular 3 8 of an inch ratchet uh, that will allow you to back the adjustment screw off. You're going to need a 13 16 socket for the lock nut and it's also a good idea to have a 13 16 wrench handy so that if you're having problems trying to torque the nut um, while keeping the adjustment screw from rotating on you, you can just use the wrench to tighten it up and then you know when you're ready you can go to final torque. Uh, you're also going to want to have a 5 16 inverted torque socket. So this one's just a Craftsman. All right, this is what you're going to use to actually engage the adjustment screw here on the uh, squared off end. All right, no hex or 12 point socket will work. It's It's got to be a star socket. Or if you have some sort of female... Um, you know, female um, square drive socket set. You, know, you could use one of them if they, they fit. All right, and then I also have a Sharpie because what I like to do is once I have the adjustment, it's right where I want it, I will make a mark right here, vertical 12 and six, so that I can tell if that screw moves at all when I'm trying to tighten the lock nut down and torque it. All right, let's go ahead and install our adjustment screw. Okay, you wanna make sure that it engages its little port on the strut. All right, get it all the way down there. And then we're gonna go to 120 inch pounds. All right. We're at 120, now we're gonna back it off one and a half turns. All right, now the factory service manual and the ATSG manual both prescribe this exact procedure. However, if you've uh, acquired any of Transgo's shift kits for this transmission, I think that there's some instructions and in, in, I don't know if it's the basic kit, but it might be the, uh, you know, the one of the more advanced ones. Um, what they have you do is back it off, starting at one and a half inch turns, or excuse me, one and a half turns, and then assess and move it either inward or outward in quarter turn increments until it's just right. So just a slight variation of what a uh, you know what ATSG and the factory service manual tells you, but um, what I'm showing you is kind of a hybridized version of that. All right, so let's start our um, our back out. So we're at uh, 12 o'clock. There's one, and there's the half turn. All right, now we want to assess the uh, band clearance and just a general feel of things. So go ahead and wiggle each side of the band. All right, this feels about right to me. I mean, that's typically what I see when I put these things together. It should have a little bit of movement, right? A little bit of travel here, just like this. 
but it should not be super loose. Shouldn't be tight either, you shouldn't be bound. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna spin the uh, output shaft counterclockwise again so I can compare how this feels to how it felt when there was no band whatsoever. Okay, this feels a little bit draggy to me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back it off about an eighth of a turn and reassess. Right there. Okay, it feels a little bit, you know, a little bit looser, but I don't want to go any further than that because I know once the transmission's in the vehicle and starts working, then you know this is going to loosen up a little bit anyway, just like everything else in the transmission is going to loosen up. You're going to get a little bit of additional clearance in all your clutch packs, assuming you soak your frictions before you do your. Uh, you know, your clutch clearance um, checks. Uh, you're going to get a little bit of um, expansion in the uh, end play, you know, the movement of all the guts in there. But we're not talking a tremendous amount here. We're talking like a couple thou here and there. So, keeping with that in mind, I think I'm actually going to rotate it back that eighth turn. There really isn't a difference, and it is rotating just fine like I'm not feeling any kind of binding or any sort of indication that the band and the drum are bound up when it's like this. Alright so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and install the new lock nut. Now one thing that you'll want to make absolutely sure before you even thread this thing in is make sure these threads are squeaky clean because if there's any grit or dirt or crud in them then uh, when you go to install the lock nut it's not going to thread on nice and easy. All right, it's going to move that adjustment screw on you. So you see that it's threading on nice and easy. All right, that's how it has to be. All right, so go ahead and stop once you've gotten to the point where it's just beginning to make contact with the case where you can kind of feel the seal wanting to push back on you a little bit. And then what I do is I'll grab my 13 16 wrench and my uh, socket here and I'm going to start basically turning the lock nut inward with the wrench while I hold the adjustment screw in place. And before I do that, let me index. The line doesn't have to be, you know, perfect or anything like that. It just has to be useful for you so that you know if that that adjustment screw is turning inward, because it will want to do that as you install the lock nut. And as you're turning it, the seal will want to push it back out. All right, so now we're tight cinched against the case. So at this point, it's ready for torque. And once it's torqued, I mean, it's done. If for whatever reason you have to take this off again, I'd recommend you install a new lock nut because more than likely the seal has been compromised. So do one last check, okay? One last check on your, um, your clearance for your band and then go ahead and spin the output shaft one last time. All right, that feels nice. No change in terms of uh, the level of effort it took to uh, spin that shaft. I mean, you can check the input shaft too if you want. It's not really going to make a difference. <clears throat> it's not going to really get to tell you anything. All right, 40 foot pounds on this lock nut. All right, no movement in the adjustment screw. All right. Okay, band is adjusted. Everything is good. So at this point, uh, you can proceed to an air check of the case if you want. 
But we'll go ahead and wrap this video up here. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, of course, leave them below and I'll get to them as soon as I can.